guys it's your girl Patrika and welcome back to my channel so as you guys can see your girl is back with another video basically I'm just gonna be talking to you guys about some things that they do not tell you about this surgery so this actually the perfect video to watch if you're thinking about getting a BBL or maybe you've just gotten a BBL what you can expect I was about to be six weeks post-op in a couple of days on January 4th I did get a BBL done in Miami and today is February 13th so I'm approaching my six week mark and there's so many things that I have to tell you guys about this recovery journey and so we're just gonna get right into it we're gonna get right into it. I have on my list number one for things they don't tell you about getting a BBL is that you're not gonna be perfect straight off the table. Um, I think that a lot of women just envisualize and they had that when you go get a BBL and wake up you're just gonna come off snatch with an hourglass shape and don't get me wrong i had a really nice shape out of surgery like i can see my hips i can see the waist like he gave me a really nice shape but you guys i still had a lot of work to do right now my waist has shrunken in so much and the crazy part is right after surgery i actually liked my body like my stomach was flat you know i had a nice shape but it looks nothing compared to what my body looks like now like you are not going to be completely snatched off the table you have to put in work to get that really nice hourglass figure shape another thing is you may have some areas after lipo that is like swollen or that have fluid because you guys I'm gonna tell you what happened to me like after I got out of surgery I noticed that when I was getting a massage on my left side like I want to say right where my rib cage is I kept feeling pain like when the massage lady would touch that area it was really painful and so I think she just happened to look in that area because she's like why she was probably thinking like why is she in so much pain when i touch this area come to find out i had like a buildup of fluid and i think she called it a lipo pocket now i don't know if that's the correct terminology i'm just calling it the word that she told me it was and so she told me it was fluid buildup which i'm gonna put the picture right here so that you guys can see just being transparent and telling you guys that your body is not just gonna be completely you know perfect after surgery and so of course i started to get worried because i'm like oh my gosh like is this permanent like is the pain gonna go away like what can i do and she just basically told me that if this happens to make sure that you just keep getting your massages and to compress and wear your faha and so of course i made sure i stayed on top of my massages because i'm like you know what i want a smooth flat stomach i don't want no fibrosis i don't want no fluid buildup and so that is very important even if it's day one post-op and you're not the body is not giving what it's supposed to give make sure you are getting those massages make sure you're drinking water make sure you're draining the fluid is coming out and you are compressing i really feel like compressing is key to really get that tiny 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 waist because which i i do fit i do plan on filming a compression video um but i really feel like compression is key because as you go through your recovery journey the waist is just going to keep on shrinking keep on shrinking so do not feel discouraged if right off the table you don't like your shape you don't like your body because it do takes time and when you see a lot of these women that had work done you don't know like you don't know what they had to put in to actually get that shape and believe it or not a lot of women they, there are a lot of women with nice bodies that only had round one i even had people asking me in my surgery group chat if i had multiple rounds of surgery in this and it's like no i only had one round but when you actually put as much energy into your aftercare as you did in your post-op and surgery you're going to have banging results so please do not get discouraged just know that this is part of the recovery process two that i have on the list for what they don't tell you after getting a bbl is body obsessiveness which i feel like it's pretty obvious like we just paid all this money for a new body of course we're going to be obsessed but i feel like it gets to the point where it's like you're gonna be obsessed obsessed <laughs> you're either gonna love your results or hate your results either or you're gonna be looking in the mirror every minute but i feel like it can get to a point where it can be unhealthy um if you're literally just staring at yourself all day trying to find things to dislike or you know just picking at yourself all day that can be very bad because like I said, um, a lot of doctors, they work with what you have. So they are not like a magician. They, they're not just going to go in and just create a whole new you. You know what I'm saying? Like for, for me, for instance, I gained 20 pounds for my BBL. But before I even gained the weight, I already had like a, like a nice... 
figure to start off with so like i basically gave my doctor something to work with so like if you like me or if you already kind of have like a decent shape then your results is only going to get better but please not but please try not to obsess over your body too much. Even for me, like when I'm not compressing and I'm out of my faha and my boards and everything, I'm like in the mirror because I'm loving my results. But it can really mess with you mentally a lot if you're constantly comparing your results, comparing your body, worrying about if your fat died. You know what I'm saying? And it's like I just try to limit myself like when I go in the shower and I take off my phones and my faha, I just like, okay, I look in the mirror for five, 10 minutes just to make sure that I'm compressing in the right areas, that I'm not too swollen. And then I just get in the shower, get out, put back on my faha and my board. So try not to obsess too much, but this, trust me, this is going to happen to everybody. Like it, it's bound to happen. So just know that. Next thing that I have on my list for, for I won't tell you about getting a BBL. And this just goes for the recovery journey, which I, I mean, I wasn't expecting it, but then again, I also was expecting it. And the next thing that I have on the list is haters. And I don't really want to use the word haters per se, but that's basically what it is. Like, I knew that when I post my BBL vlog and put it on YouTube and all this stuff, that there were obviously going to be some people commenting on the videos, just giving their opinion, which I don't care about. But I just, I'm beginning to realize that there are more people who is not going to be happy for you than people that are going to be happy for you, if that makes sense. And um, this also goes to me just doing my research and just seeing other women that, you know, decided to have this journey and hear about their experiences. And a lot of people say that they lost friendships um going through this they lost relationships and you know they be out and people make comments so this is just something that you have to just keep in mind that you may have some people that's going to hate on you after their surgery like whether it's strangers online whether it's someone that you're dealing with whether it whether it's your so-called friends like this is just something that's going to come along with it um but don't let something like that or people like discourage you from your decision because at the end of the day do what makes you happy like don't sit and you know care about what people say because i just kind of reached that point where i don't care what nobody says i do things to make me happy and to be and to be 100 percent honest i do not regret my bbl i'm actually so happy that i did it like i'm very extremely happy so don't let nobody talk you out of it or try to put you down about it or the hate like i've seen so many videos between youtube tiktok instagram of girls saying that their friends no longer invite them out because they're gonna steal attention of this that it's i'm like this is just ridiculous if you are or if if you are surrounded by people that are so insecure within your circle then they don't even they don't even need to be in your life at, at the end of the day just do what makes you happy like don't feed off the opinions of other people or just let that bother you and even for YouTube, like when people leave comments that I don't really like, I just, I don't care. It's like, I don't know you. I don't care what you have to say. This is my body. This is what I'm going to do. And that's about it. So just know that there are going to be some haters and be prepared. <laughs> like just be prepared. It's just a warning. <laughs> do have on the list is definitely scarring. Um, this is something that, that is not really talked about. For me, for instance, the scarring after BBL, mine isn't too bad. But just know that if your skin is prone to keloids, then you might want to be careful and make sure that you are taking or doing something post-surgery to prevent your skin from scarring really bad. I ordered these off Amazon. These are actually a part of my Amazon list. But I did order these medical silicone scar removal sheets. So this is what I'm using on my skin to get rid of my scar. I'm actually am gonna put up some images of here just being transparent and showing you guys what my scarring is looking like and so because I am six weeks post op they said it takes like probably like eight weeks for my for me to see a difference in my scarring so I am gonna tell you guys in my BBL recovery vlog and give you guys an update on what my scarring is looking like but just know that you are gonna have some scarring so it just happens with any surgery. They have to make a cut in your body, an incision. And so some people is lucky where their body don't scar and they don't really leave behind scars, but other people is not as lucky. So try out these medical scar removal sheets. The next thing that I have on my list for things they don't tell you about getting a BBL is the money for upkeep. 
Now, obviously this is, this is something that I definitely know because I've been doing my research for years, but I just wanna tell you guys that this is something that you should know. Like, after getting a BBL, it is not cheap. Like, my recovery actually was just as expensive as the surgery itself. So it's like, whatever your, whatever your surgery is cost, you're definitely gonna have to add a couple more thousand just for recovery. And even after, like I'm six weeks post out now, even after the six weeks, you still gonna be paying for recovery for months because I have to still get massages. You're still gonna have to, you know, get the waist trainers, get the fajas to keep the waist snatched. Like it's a style change, a diet change. Like it's a lot that, that goes into keeping your upkeep after surgery so please keep that in mind like it's definitely a lifestyle change so make sure that you are ready to take on a lifestyle change you know you're gonna have to buy new clothes a lot of my clothes do not fit anymore because a lot of my clothes like my bottom was, was a size small and now I have to go up a size and then when it comes to my shirts they're really baggy in the waist area because my waist is small now it's really small now so it's like I basically needed a new wardrobe I had to give away a lot of my clothes so it's like I can't even I only have a couple of outfits and stuff outside and so these are things that I didn't really think about like oh my gosh now I have to get a new wardrobe but that is a good thing that's definitely a good thing, but just keep that in mind. Like, getting a BBL is definitely a whole lifestyle change. Like, everything you're going to have to change. Um, just something that I have on my list for things they don't tell you about getting a BBL. This one is definitely something that you guys need to keep in mind. And that is loneliness. Or sometimes it can even transform into depression after getting a BBL. Um, like I mentioned just now, the recovery period after getting a BBL, you're going to be in the house for six to eight weeks and you can't really go anywhere because you can't sit and you're going to be in pain. Your stomach is going to feel tight. You're going to be in your fire high on your boards. So, so going outside and stepping outside is pointless unless you're getting a massage. And so if you don't have a good support system around you, you can definitely begin to feel lonely as I have like there are some days because you're just in the house all day yeah you can be on social media or um watch tv and stuff like that but it's like you're just gonna feel lonely because if you're like me I'm used to being outside I'm used to working I'm used to like being on the go and so to do all that and just have to stay put it definitely took a toll on me and um this is not just me because I've seen you know some other girls talk about it in their video as well but this is definitely something that but well, this is definitely something that you do want to keep in mind like if you are prepared for surgery then i would definitely suggest that you make a list of things that you plan on doing during your recovery period to keep yourself busy whether that's starting a new business whether that is reading some books whether that's learning about investing learning about stocks find a new podcast like I really suggest that you take your recovery time period and be productive because like I said you're gonna be in the house for so long and the last thing you want is nothing to do um you can and some people are actually prone to depression so if you're someone that's prone to depression I really feel like you need to try to make sure that you have a support system after surgery because believe it or not I feel like and it's like this is a serious subject. Mental health is definitely a serious subject, but if you are prone to anxiety or depression, then that can definitely flare up during your recovery period because like I said, you're just literally in the house. And if you don't really have a support system, then that can certainly happen. Recovery period will really show you who your real friends are because if someone is not reaching out, if nobody's really checking on you, then it will actually show you who's there for you and who's not. And so make sure that you guys do have a really good support system so that you can be occupied and, you know, you can stay productive because you use your time very wisely. As for me, I have been fixing my credit. So that's definitely something that I can say I, I accomplished while I was in recovery. I've been fixing my credit, I'm cleaning up my Instagram pages. I've been able to grow my YouTube channel, been productive. I scheduled a photo shoot. Um, it's a lot so I can say that I use my time pretty wisely could I have used it better yes but I did use it pretty wisely and so if you're watching this and you have a BBO coming up or anything I just want to wish you guys good luck and have the best recovery and I think I mentioned everything on the list that I wanted to get out things they don't tell you oh, surgery 
and thank you guys so much for watching make sure make sure you guys follow your girl on instagram at glamdoll underscore patrika subscribe we are on the road to 10k and i will see you guys in my next video bye